Okay, here we are, Matthew Russell Lee, Inner City Press, here at the Southern District of New York Courthouse. Today, Friday, July 26, 2024. Um, we will start with the Trump uh, uh, docket. There was a response yesterday by uh, the office of Alvin Bragg to the motion to apply the immunity decision by the Supreme Court to the criminal conviction here. And they say there's no connection, that the actions was all before he was president, which is largely true. Um, but I was there when uh, Hope Hicks testified about action in the, in the Oval Office and Madeleine Westerhout. Now, they're saying that th those, that was testimony about purely private things. You can, you can look this up. We actually, uh, Inner City Course put out a book called uh, Hope and Davidson, and Westerhout is in there as well. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not, I mean, again, it, it, then they said, well, it, even, in any event, there was more than enough evidence to convict. And that's also probably, uh, given the way that they structured it, probably true. Um, but I think in the closing, Steinglass said this was the nail in the coffin, this uh, testimony that seems to implicate it. So we'll just have to see what happens. Also, the Trump people filed their appeal of the Letitia James Judge Engeron decision. Um, Engeron has said that he's done nothing wrong, everything stands fully behind it, he doesn't need to be recused, and we'll see what the appellate division does. We're, we're covering those. We're covering those. But, but, uh, of course, we're covering the, the Manaf Afghanistan trial. But today a theme is going to be Venezuela. On, on Sunday there's an election in Venezuela. Will Nicolas Maduro uh, pull through? All I know is that yesterday afternoon, at the last case of the day was PDVSA, involved PDVSA, some Gerard Street, some uh, investment firm suing PDVSA for not, uh, the pe pe Petroleos de Venezuela, for not paying money. Ironically, the lawyers, two big law firms, um, the lawyers for PDVSA were talking about the Maduro regimes. They seem kind of like a breakaway. Maybe they're kind of Guaidoites. Anyway, Judge Rakoff said, my favorite journalist is there in the back, and you've got to tell me if my jokes are, you know, good, uh, bad jokes. They were good jokes, and we're going to be covering that case. Also going to be covering the election. And um, there was also the case of Orsini. He was a pilot uh, in a drug case, uh, Venezuelan. He, he got time served, and I believe he's going to remain in Florida. So there is that. Speaking of coming to the United States, a son of El Chapo and another guy called Ed Mayo will be coming to EDNY on a fentanyl uh, indictment there. Not to, it's just sort of jumping all over. It's Friday, so it's a grab bag. There was a Chinese fentanyl case yesterday in, uh, across the street here in Forty Foley. Uh, Hubei a Marvel. And by, uh, here I'm going to say, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty convinced that Hubei a Marvel was selling these fentanyl precursors. But the two people they have locked up, one of whom was brought from Fiji, maybe both, through Hawaii. They're in the MDC, and one guy said he's in the shoe, and everyone has knives on the men's side of the house. And the other woman, she's a woman, she's in the female side of the MDC. She says that there's K2 being smoked all night, and she wakes up with a bloody nose. So that's a prison condition condition. Speaking of conditions, the United Nations. The condition, full corruption. Fully captured, but beyond that, full censorship. There's been no, this week, twice, the UN uh, disclosed child rapes by its peacekeepers, cases against them. And nobody they let in even ask them about them. What happened to the victims or who's being held accountable? It's pretty shocking because I think almost anywhere on earth, maybe they've become jaded. Maybe UN and child rape is just like, you know, uh, but not to us. And so Inner City Press will continue to push to get back in. We've had Quinn Emanuel and Dwayne Morris write pro bono letters. That hasn't worked. So we'll, it could be that this Petavesa case uh, provides a key because it says even with sovereign immunity and various in the UN immunity, when you operate as a business, uh, you kind of waive it when you're in a business capacity. And the UN pretends to be a news organization. Check out Melissa Fremming's propaganda shop. They call it news. And so, well, to be continued. Have a good weekend. Inner City Press.